They've never lost a battle. Never lost a battle. It showed up in every one that I had, amen. Way out of nowhere. Trust in God. Feel able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Above all that we're able to ask for think according to the power. Work it in us, amen. Uh, again, we say good morning to everybody. Morning. Happy Father's Day to all the brothers here today, amen. amen. To all the fathers, to all the men in the room. As we read God's word, take it from Psalms 112. You still have your Bibles open or your scripture devices handy. We ask that you will share with us again from Psalms 112. In the 10 verses, we will read those in your hearing. If you're physically able to stand, I ask that you please stand. Well, the word says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed is the man who fears the Lord, who delights greatly in his commandments. Mm -hmm. His descendants will be mighty on earth. The generation of the upright will be blessed. Hallelujah. Wealth and riches will be in his house. Yeah. And his righteousness endures forever. Amen. Unto the upright there arises light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man deals graciously and lends. He will guide his affair with discretion. Surely he will never be shaken. The righteous will be in everlasting remembrance. He will not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He will not be afraid until he sees his desires upon his enemies. He has dispensed abroad. He has given to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. His horn will be exalted with honor. The wicked will see it and be grieved. He will gnash his teeth and melt away. The desires of the wicked shall perish. Eternal of God, our Father, we come. Thank you for this day, your goodness, your mercy, your grace on this another Sunday morning, another Father's Day celebration. We thank you, dear Lord, for all that you have done, all that you're doing in our lives. We thank you for every hearer, every viewer, every listener, every attendee this morning, oh God. May all of us, oh God, find what we desire, what we need from this word this morning, oh God. We ask always that you continue to strengthen us as we Right to divide the word of truth. As always, give us preaching and teaching power. You be reverence your son, Jesus Christ, we receive. And every sinful man, woman, boy, and girl have an opportunity to repentance. But in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated on this Father's Day. Amen. Amen. I just want to share with the brethren. Amen. Can I just share with the brethren? I might have to get out of my coat. Here. I feel a sweat coming off. It's, it's, it's not about your past, brother, in this morning. So don't let Satan discourage you already. Amen. The message this morning is more future. Amen. 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 To pre prevent some things from happening, to present some progress in your life. All of us need progress in our lives. Amen. So this morning, we want to be exposed, say exposed, Amen. to the biblical example, the biblical portrait of a man and men behaving in a godly way. Amen. For the title of the sermon this morning to keep you focused is simply Man Up. Man up. Oh, right. I, uh, sitting down reflecting this past week uh, my life and my relationship with my dad who's no longer with us here and thought about some things that uh he used to do with me how he used to take me a place in those in petersburg those in virginia who might be listening a place called we call halifax street the lord and i was up and down that street in our absence here in virginia halifax street aka the avenue aka the block all right. All right. <laughs> Amen. 
Amen. Uh, how my dad used to go up in these barber shops. Mm. Amen. They had barber shops and they had pool halls and they had shoe shine shops. What happened to the shoe shine shops? I used to work in the shoe. I used to I used to shine shoes, but, yeah, but he used to take me all up in there, and, and, and I'll never forget as long as I live. Uh, there, there, back then, older gentlemen sold into younger boys' lives. Watch this, whether you ask for it or not, they sold into your life. Them old brothers, they were. They will meet you, talk to you, and say things to you. I never forget, I was maybe 10, 11 years old, and went up in the barber shop and same barber shop. As many times as my daddy went into the barber shop, I never saw him get a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> but anyhow, that's something else. I got off track. <laughs> But I went into the barber shop that day, mm -hmm. and there was an older gentleman that my daddy introduced me to. Mm -hmm. And he took his hand, shook, shake my hand, shook his hand out there. And apparently, mm -hmm. I must have just laid. Mm -hmm. Apparently, mm -hmm. I must have just laid my hand in his. Mm -hmm. And that brother grabbed my little hand, mm -hmm. looked me in the eye, and said, Don't you never ever shake another man's hand like that again. He said, Squeeze it. Okay. But from that day forward, I have never ever just laid my hand in anybody's hand. If you get a cane handshake, you're going to get an old man who some almost some 40, 50 years ago taught him how to shake another man. And he said, and you always look him in the eye. Sewing into my life. I didn't, I didn't ask, I didn't go up and ask him about how do you shake another man's hand. But, but that's where men were then. Lord. My dad used to do things like so. In other words, the brother said to me, Man up! Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you can shake his hand, shake his hand. Right. My dad used to say things to me. His instruction to me. He didn't say man up then, but that's that's the emphasis that he was playing into my life, amen. amen. When you can fall or you hurt yourself, and he looks at you and tell you, and you better not crack. Pet <laughs> not cry. Hit up on it and try it again. In other words, he's saying, man up. Would you not agree with me this morning that what the world really needs today is men manning up? Amen. 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 See, I got a lot of claps from the ladies. And I, 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 and I realize that because, brethren, that's part of the downfall. When you see ladies and women and mother taking the necessary course of action, it's because we have failed to man up. A woman is only going to tolerate you. <laughs> no, I can't say that. <laughs> Not in here. Oh, man. Man. <laughs> they ain't going to tolerate it for so long. And then after they have tolerated long as they can put up with it, then they just going to move. That's right. So what we need, we need more men to man up and start acting more godly. That's what the text is about. Men finally behaving in a godly way. Proverbs 
26 asks a very sobering question. It says, but a faithful man who can find. If there was ever a time when the world needed faithful men, it's today. So I'm directing my message directly to the men on Zoom 2. So I'm not trying to exclude the ladies. But for those of you that are with me on Mother's Day, when I gave you your message, I told all the brothers to say with me, my time's coming. Did I not say that? I said, your time, say with me all together, my time's coming. Well, I got good news for you. Yeah, I know. But I didn't think about it with mine that I spent some time this morning trying to help the husband. Maybe help the boyfriends, help the fathers, help the brothers, help the son, help the pastor. To man up, shape up, ship up. But I do need your help, ladies. I do need your help, wives, this morning. As I try to work on your husband, you may just want to be taking notes. Cause they ain't gonna take no, they ain't, ain't none of them gonna take no notes this morning. And nobody broke out no pen, no pad, nobody. They going simply by what they hear. So, ladies, wives, take a note so you can remind them later what I said. Listen to me, brothers, men. <laughs> the men in America do need a wake-up call. Amen. The world needs us. The world certainly needs Christian men. Say Christian men. Christian More than ever. Lord. The wives need godly men. Lord. Your children need Godly men. Amen. The church needs godly. godly men. Businesses need godly men. The community at large. We need men behaving and acting godly. You ought to be convinced like I am that if we are to survive this 21st century, we need a strong male presence. Strong male leadership. How does the family move forward through godly fathers, godly husbands, As the family goes, as the family goes, think, as the family goes, so goes our society. Lord, Lord. And as men go, so goes the family. Brother, I know it. It's a Huge responsibility to be the head of the house. Ain't nothing easy about it. Ain't, ain't, ain't. I know it shouldn't be, ain't, but I said it. Ain't nothing easy about it. Every time you turn around, you got to make a decision about something Huh? Come on, somebody. You can wake up in the morning and stuff will show up. Broke down, ain't working. Just paying for this over here. Now, do we continue to wash 
the hands manually or do I go out and try to get a new dishwasher? Mm -hmm. It might be, brother. <laughs> and just because your children is out the house, don't mean they're out your wallet. Right. I've come to learn that the family, the family keys off. The family takes their direction from your leadership. And when, when the husband, when the father, when the men are fulfilling their God-given assignments as spiritual leaders in your home, then here's what happened. The home now becomes stable. It becomes secured and it becomes satisfied. If you're doing your God-given assignments, but some brothers are AWOL. And when you look at it, you deep dive and when you dissect it, you realize that when the family crumbles and begin to fall apart, it is most often the result of men failing in their God-given roles as spiritual leaders. Amen? Amen. Amen. When men fail, they fail the home. And when the home falls apart, all of society feels the repercussions. It's a domino effect. It'll be long with you. And so when we look at Psalms 112, it's David is the author. David was a man's man. Hmm? This brave young lad who killed Goliath, mm -hmm. cut off his head. He, he was a warrior, amen? amen? David was a family man. Amen. He had the responsibilities of a wife, mm -hmm. children. In fact, in fact, in this one area mm -hmm. of David's life is where he produced his greatest failure. In his family. Read it. Read the story, David. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Like David, like David, like David. <laughs> Most men allow what I call things to distract you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They distract you from your priorities mm -hmm. distract you from your attention mm -hmm. that should have been given to your family, your wife, and your children. Mm -hmm. But we brothers can be easily distracted. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. David was a businessman, mm -hmm. a great responsibility, mm -hmm. successful king. Mm -hmm. He was a builder. An administrator. He also was a spiritual man. As a matter of fact, the Bible said that David was a man after God's. David was a leader. David could relate, I believe, to every man in this room today. But he experienced things that we experience. Amen. David can relate to us and we can relate to him. Statistics says that every day some 300,000 men become first time fathers, first time daddies, become a father without any training. 
always amazing how the natural instinct can take over. I sometimes have conversation with the Lord about things and, and, and say, we, we don't we, we don't have to teach that part. They got that part, don't they? They know how to do that, don't they? They may not know nothing else. They may not can write a sentence. They may not can point out the verb and the noun, but they can do that, can't they? And you know what I'm talking about doing, too. Yeah. Read where William Rasper, he's a columnist for the Washington Post. He says, he says that if I could offer one single prescription for the survival of America and particularly for black America, it would be to restore the family. And he said, and if you ask me how I would go about doing that. He said, I would say, save the boys. I was 10, 11, when I had my first encounter, folks sewing into your life. But I'm here to entertain to get the boys. You got to get them earlier now. If you wait to about 10, 11, I'm sorry. 10 or 11, you might have lost a lot of those young brothers. And see, where we fail, where we fail, where we fail, where the church fail to reach out and get those young brothers, the world grab them. Grab them, snatch them, teach them, train them what they want them to know. And so when we finally do get around to try to reach them, we got too much ground to try to recover from. They don't want to hear nothing you have to say. As a matter of fact, they'll stand up in your face and tell you. I don't want to hear that. And that's this general thing, let alone when we try to teach, share Jesus Christ. So look who done got him. Psalms 112, get you out of here, tells us exactly where the whole process has to begin. Look at verse one, look at verse one, look at verse one, bless it. It's the man who fears the Lord. That's, that's the root of the problem. Amen. Too many brothers, too many men do not have a healthy, say healthy, fear of God. Too many brothers, too many men do not find great delight in God's commands. Amen. When a brother, when a man, when a husband, when a father fears God and truly loves God's word, that man is on his way to true godliness. You know his life is going to be productive. His life is going to be successful, amen? amen. Get your Bible, get your Bible. And, and just look at, just look at the promises mm -hmm. that's associated with a man who fears God and find great, I mean, I get no further than right here for the day. Look at it. Verse two, there is a promise concerning his children. You see that? Look at verses three and four. A promise concerning his character. When I look at verse 4, there are four times in verse 4 that the Bible mentioned man's righteous character. You at verse 5 yet? Look at his conduct. Verses 6 through 8 shows his confidence. Verse 9 deals with his charity. 
that he ain't all by himself. He cares for others. Verse 6 says, concerning his commendation. And then verse 9, I love it because it says, endure it forever. Let me give you five minutes. I'm going to sit down with you. What we have to do, brother, is acknowledge the power of your influence. Say influence. influence. I want you to realize with the time that we have here, your tremendous power of influence on your marriage. Influence on your children. Good, bad, or otherwise, you influence them. Your wife, your wife happiness and emotional security in life rest upon you. Not stuff, not gifts, not house, not car, not diamond, not pearl, not rubies, but you. Being the head of the wife don't mean you her boss. <laughs> or her taskmaster. It does not mean that you have the right to rule over her like a tyrant. But it means you have the responsibility for her well-being. You are her supply. You're the one who provides security and satisfaction to her. She's the responder. How you act is how she gonna respond. Mm. Y'all take that note, lady. Y'all put that note. Right. Chat that one there. Amen. <laughs> See, because the Bible says that you are to love your wife as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. <laughs> If you do that, she will be secured. She will feel secured, satisfied, and happy. What you have to learn how to do is she's a responder is to find her frequency. Your wife might be operating on 103, 101.3. You might be on 96.1. We have a problem. Avoid, avoid the pitfalls of masculinity because masculinity will get your butt in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never forget the first time. Masculinity stood up in my life. Oh, a little peach fudge. Got a little hair going around my nose. Of my nose. Tall as my daddy. He look him in the eye. Some inside of me said, just say it. Uh, just say it. Uh, say it. He told you to man up this might. Be a good time. <laughs> <laughs> Hurricane Senior told me, there ain't but one man in this house. <laughs> you need to decide who you gonna be. <laughs> Take the Lord to tell you, I don't try to hide his real is real. 
That was the last time I lived in my daddy's house. Those old warriors, they're old, old school. Huh? They show you the door. There was a word behind that point. I can't share it with you, but you pretty much told what it was. That's right. Last time I lived in my mom and daddy's house. You can go. So about it here. So be careful. Avoid the pitfalls. Trying to help you of your masculinity. Because the way that we are built as fallen sons of Adam can work against you. Because by nature, we do not have a natural bent to godliness. Our bent is towards sinfulness and selfishness. Let me just give you a few pitfalls. Arrogance. Say arrogance. Yeah. Somebody said that men are 99% ego wrapped in skin. Because we have our own unique version of pride and arrogance. We have this ego always looking for competition. I'm going to say that the ladies would probably agree that if we could buy a man for what he is worth and sell him for what he thinks he's worth, you can probably turn a profit. Absentee. Men are running absent mm -hmm. right in their own house. Lord. Lord. The kids need you, your wife need you day and night. Help them do some things around the house. I'm serious, help them. Help your wife do some things around the house. Say amen, brother. Amen. Amen. And let me see, I'm gonna stop right here. I'm, I'm gone. My time is... I, I learned that, learned that the hard way. How was one? Husband who, my responsibilities, uh, my duties is on the outside. I wash the car, cut the grass, garbage, I take the garbage out. I do all of the outside functions. It's my responsibility. Look around, make sure the house doesn't be painted. Do those sorts of things. Because the inside is so right. She do the inside. Cooking, and the vacuuming, the laundry, raising the kids. That's what she does. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 then I experience that when I wanted to uh, share with my wife, she she, she no. So, Different frequency, my dick said. Huh? Yeah. So I got an attitude. I think the Lord just simply sometimes have to slap you upside the head. And he says, but if you help in the inside, if you do something, you can. You can vacuum and watch TV at the same time. If you do something to help her out, she wouldn't be as tired. 
And when she wants, and when you wants to cuddle, she'll cuddle with you. I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying to just be all nice up in here today, but she'll cuddle up with you. She, her, watch her, her mind will be on cuddleable activity. That's, yeah, that's real. So you need to hear that. Then that way you won't have no attitude and realize that it's a partnership that you're sharing in this thing together and that you can do. It won't that I couldn't. Like I didn't know what the vacuum cleaner was, that I didn't know how to turn it on, that I didn't know. No, it's just because I didn't want to. Here's the thing that'll get you into my am done now. It's called presupposition. When you come into a marriage relationship, brother, many times we come in with presuppositions. We come in with a mindset about how things going to go in your marriage. I went in. I don't wash no dishes. I don't wash no dishes. Where you get that from? Because I saw Harry Kane Senior say, I don't wash no dishes. And that's what I brought up in my marriage. I don't wash no dishes. But I quickly learned. From that lady right there. That if you eat out of them, that if you dirty them up in here, you clean presupposition get you in a lot of trouble so you have to learn how god wants you to do what you need to do amen, amen. man up every brother in here including the pastor and those on zoom there is still more you can do that's a fact leave here with no take that note man there's still more i can do and i'm gonna start it today you see your wife in a situation where she's uncomfortable. Don't leave her in it. Don't leave her in it. I'll share with you what happened yesterday. We went out, got a good little bite to eat, went to one of these places, and, and it was just too cold. It was freezing up in there. Now somebody wanted salmon. <laughs> so we went to the salmon place. But when we got up in there, it was too cold to eat the salmon. Yeah. Anytime you sit down and you, and you move into one of these positions like this, it's not going to be a comfortable outing, a comfortable day. But no girl was trying to pull through to get the salmon. No, no. I said, I said you okay, babe? You okay? No, no. No, 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 no. You, you, uh, we ain't get, you can get that far, Ibra. You, you okay? I said, you okay? She said, about leaving. I ain't saying about leaving. I said, you okay? She said, about leaving. I said, yes, let's go. We got up then, right then, right then. It left. You get your salmon another day. We got halfway to the door. The general manager came right behind us. All right, y'all all right, y'all all right, y'all all right, everything all right. Yeah, we all right, she just cold, we leave it. Don't put her through it. Amen. Don't put her through it. Amen. If you can make a move to do something different, do it. yeah, I wanted to add something, but do it. I just feel that way. Let us pray. Get you out of here. Uh, eternal God of Father, we thank you for your didactic message this morning, instructed to all of us, fathers, husbands, future fathers, potential husbands, whatever, that we might hear what you said through your word. A lot more we could have said, oh God, but for the time that we've given us, let the seed that you have given us so deep into our being today, that we are better husbands, better fathers. God, and we give your name all glory. Thank you for what you've done. It's, it's not easy. And, and I'm saying to you, it's not easy. You know it won't going to be easy. 
but you have given us tools. You have given us other brothers to come alongside us and nothing else, just, just encourage me. We don't say nothing there, man, but me too. Yeah. Let me know that I'm not in this thing all by myself. <laughs> God, the, the responsibilities that you have given us. So we thank you for this day, this Father's Day. May these brothers enjoy and whatever is planned for them. Whatever gift they may receive, whatever card they get, whatever text they get, oh God, let them just enjoy that thing. Whatever meal set before them today, we just simply say thank you. Thank you, God, that you have continued to bless us, show us, guide and direct us. Especially for these Christian brothers who's here today, oh God, they know. They know that you'll be there beside them every step of the way. Now, maybe somebody here, somebody with us on Zoom that don't know Christ Jesus, for the free pardon of their sins. And we simply ask that brother, sister, you will bow your head, humble your hearts, and simply say, Lord, forgive me of my sins. There may be a husband who's listening out there unsaved. If you want to know what's going to make it better for you in your relationship, your wife, your children, what have you, is having Jesus Christ in your life. Having the, the sure one in your life. So say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins Come into my life. God, and I'm asking you to be Lord and Savior of my life. So I always say that's predicated, that statement is predicated on biblical truth, the biblical foundation that says that thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in the heart that God has raised from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's the premise by which you can say, forgive me of my sins and come into my life. If you said that, put your mouth, believe it in your heart. Bible says that thou shalt be saved. But not only for those who are unsaved today, as well as for those who may want to be a part of this ministry, this fellowship, come as in the Christian experience, however the Lord might be leading you, it's, it's also appropriate at this time. And so, dear God, we just say thank you. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you for what you're doing. And thank you for what you're going to do. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us stand. Let us stand. I did say if there's anyone here in the sanctuary this morning, if you so desire to come, candidate for baptism, Christian experience, however the Lord might be leading you, you may do so this time. Thank you, Lord. For the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Worthy, worthy, worthy of the praise. Amen. These who stand here today, we would ask for the deacons to take them and get their information. Amen. The Lord is ever doing great things in our lives. Amen. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit. Says the Lord. We want to thank all of you, all of you, all of you, those of you who are here in the sanctuary, those of you who are on Zoom. Everybody have a blessed day, amen. Well, then God bless you. Have a great day, amen. Amen. Let us pray. Turn to God our Father, we thank you. All our eyes to see you, superb and hard heads go. We thank you for yet another experience in the sanctuary, another experience in worship. God, and as we come this morning, we came in the building and just tuned in. Oh God, we came, oh God, to sing psalm hymns and spiritual songs. But most importantly, most importantly, we came to hear from the Holy Writ, all the scriptures. And because of this service of today, we're much more bold and emboldened in such a way that as we go outside these doors, we go forward to tell 
somebody, anybody, everybody that Jesus Christ saves. Now to him, we're able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before his presence with exceeding joy. The only wise God, our Father, be the glory and the majesty, dominion and power, henceforth, now, and forevermore. I'll let the church say. Amen.